Life by Divine with Sue Tomei fosters deep healing and profound awakenings as she guides you to hear, answer, and trust the highest calling of your heart. Your host and sacred guide is global impact visionary leader Sue Demay, a best-selling author, international speaker, and gifted intuitive healer who challenges all of us to shift from life by default or even life by design to truly living life by divine. And now, here is Sue Demay. Welcome to the show. It's an honor to be here once again with you. And today I'm I want to talk about some tips and tools for highly sensitive people in a noisy world. And if you're one of those individuals that are highly sensitive, the world is getting noisier and noisier and more busy energetically as well as emotionally and mentally. So I want to talk today about some ideas, perspectives, tools, tricks that I've learned over the years to help people that are highly sensitive. Me being extremely hypersensitive, highly sensitive, I have learned a lot of different tricks and tools over the years. The ones that kind of are my favorites I'll share today. There's, there's hundreds of different things that you can use. The challenge is finding information and finding those tools that work for you. So whatever I share today, I'll talk a little bit about highly sensitive people, but I'll also, when I share the tools, when I'm giving you some insights, what I want to encourage you to do is just take what resonates and leave the rest behind. So you don't have to do all of these things. Just do one or two, pick up one or two, integrate it, give them a go and see how, if they help you. And if they help you, then continue them. And I find that a lot of times the tools will work for a certain period of time and then they kind of shift and they're not as effective anymore. And then a new tool will come in or a new way of being for me will come in. So I'm always open to spiritual directions. I'm always open to my heart leading me and guiding me to different tools and different things. I often get downloads, these creative ideas and different tools that pop in. And it often happens on the Heart Light Living member calls as well as I'm channeling and, and providing answers for other people, some insights come in and I'm like, oh, I really like that idea. So I'll take that and I'll integrate it into my life as well. So I want to encourage you just to take what resonates and leave the rest behind. When it comes to being highly sensitive, particularly in today's world, the way everything is happening right now, it can be extremely overwhelming. It can bring, bring you to your knees. It can make you want to tuck yourself in, a, in, a, in the bed and cover yourself up with the blankets and turn off all the lights. It can make you want to go live in a cave somewhere. The, the ex extreme nature of the noise right now in the world can be overwhelming in itself. When you add on the energetic shifts that are happening on the planet and the shifts that are happening in, in, even in the, in the pull of the moon. So as the moon cycles move, I can feel, I, mean, I don't follow the moon cycles specifically, but I can feel when the moon shifts because I feel the pulse in my system. I feel the pulls in my energy field. So being highly sensitive, there's different degrees of sensitivity. You can be highly sensitive to emotion. You can be highly sensitive to noise. You can be sensitive to other people's experiences or situations or environments. You can be sensitive to touch your senses itself, like smells, light, and sun, like too much sunshine, that sort of thing. And there's, there's like a whole variety of different things that can affect us. Now, to some degree, all of us can be sensitive. We can increase our sensitivities and become more attuned or more sensitive to the energies, the subtle energies within us and around us. We can become more attuned and in touch with all of the experiences that our people, other people are having. We can be, become more connected because ultimately we're all one. We're all connected at the source of who we are. 
however, we're having these experiences as separate human beings. So we have an experience of separation in our humanness, and we can experience living oneness as well within our humanness. So I'm not going to go too much into that piece, but I do want to re I do want to help you realize that a lot of times our sensitivity to what other people are feeling or sensing or knowing is us tapping into that our channel to oneness our channel to our source which is spirit the divine god whatever it is that you feel comfortable calling it when we are in alignment and attuned to the divine guidance within us when we're living life by divine we will become more sensitive and with that heightened sensitivity will become a lowered tolerance so we won't have the tolerance we used to have for different things that we used to be able to accept and just be okay with so as our sensitivity increases our tolerance lowers that's really common but it's also good news because it keeps us in alignment but it keeps us doing what we need to do in order to care for our humanness, our human bodies, as well as our souls, our spirits. So let's dive in. Let's take a look at what is the highly sensitive person? What does that look like, feel like? How does that show up? And then we'll take a look at some of the tools and different tricks and stuff that I can share with you over the years that I've gathered. And these are all things that I teach in the Intuition Academy. I teach them within my Heart Love Living membership. Um, I mentor a lot of light workers and people that are highly sensitive to help them be able to navigate the world. And it's really important that we know how to take care of ourselves so that we can extend and do the work that we're meant to do. That's the only sustainable way to be in the world is to take care of us, take care of ourselves, to fill our heart first and give from the overflow. There's going to be times where we actually need to pull back and pull away and find some quiet time and, and maybe even turn out the lights and kind of hibernate a little bit. So the key is when we get those prompts, when we get that sense that we need to pull back or recuperate or rejuvenate, then we need to listen to that guidance. The challenge is a lot of times we resist it. And the resistance increases your sensitivity and it becomes harder and harder to be in the world. And the world becomes noisier and noisier. So let's first look at a highly sensitive person. The, the, the phrase highly sensitive person was actually coined by Dr. Elaine Aaron and her husband. She's a clinical psychologist and they did a lot of work in the in the 90s around people that were sensitive, sensitive to smells, sounds, light, sensitive to emotions, sensitive to negativity or different situations around them. So you may have a varying degree of sensitivity. And as I'm talking, I just want you to become aware. That's the first step is become aware of how your sensitivity shows up and maybe the degree of sensitivity that you're having right now. So from a scale from zero to 10, you could be feeling somewhat sensitive on certain days, maybe a one or two. And then other days you might feel like you're a 10 or even higher, 11 or 12 out of 10. I know I had that experience recently where I literally was, we were out and about, we were shopping, shopping with my husband. And I, I, I was like, everything felt like nails on a chalkboard. And I was overstimulated and highly hypersensitive at the time and i got to the point where i just said to him i'm like i need to go home like i need to go home now i can't be out in public and i realized it probably about an hour after that that if i was really tuning in to that nudge i probably wouldn't have gone to that final store that we were shopping at and for me it really came <laughs> came to a head when there was a, someone pushing a grocery cart behind me. No, it was in front of me. And they had like this weird, it wasn't a squeaky wheel, but it was a weird rubbing kind of weird noise on the wheel. 
And my first thought was like, how can they possibly push that cart around with all that noise? And why wouldn't they change the cart, right? That was my hypersensitivity. I don't even think they noticed that their cart was making noise. And the volume probably was really only like a two out of 10 to them, maybe even zero out of 10. But for me, it was like a 10 out of 10. It was loud. It was irritating. I, I literally at one point plugged my ears and was pushing the cart with my, my elbows because I just couldn't handle the noise. So I ended up going a different direction to get away from them. And as I was going around, there's people talking, there's people in different directions. And I was feeling very agitated. I was feeling very sensitive. I was feeling very impacted by every little tiny thing. Even the smallest whispers felt like someone was yelling. And so I finally started to kind of breathe and I could feel myself just kind of settling into the environment, even though it was overwhelming. And then the squeaky wheel or the rubby squeaky wheel came back. The, the person was right behind me again. And I literally plugged my ears again. I'm like, I have to go home. That was the point where I said, I have to go home. We need to go check out right now. I don't care if I was done shopping or not. I needed to go home. So, and then when I got outside, I got into the vehicle, the sun was really bright. So I had to put the, the visor down. I put my sunglasses on so I could really feel everything. And it was like someone had turned up the volume on all of my senses. And it was overwhelming. As soon as I got home, I got quiet. I got under the blanket. I kind of tucked in. And I just was focusing on my breath and I could calm down. My environment at home is really, really important to me. And for those that are really highly sensitive, they often will have some type of an environment, whether it's a room or a chair or whatever it is, the whole home, whatever it is, that is kind of a sacred ground. It's like the sacred space where you can settle in, relax and rejuvenate and recover if you need to from these episodes. I haven't had an episode like that in a long time. So for me, being highly sensitive and often hypersensitive, I haven't had that moment where I just really needed to go and I needed to go now. I haven't had that in a long, long time. I used to have that a lot, but I never gave myself permission to actually make the choice to go. I never give myself permission to make that choice for peace. I would push through, I would force things, I would feel guilty for leaving, so I would stay and I would self-sacrifice and all of these kinds of things that we do as humans. I did them, but I don't do them anymore. And even when I'm looking back at that moment where I, where I kind of hit the wall, I realized that it wasn't just me feeling hypersensitive, there's an energy pull in uh, pulling on our systems right now. The moon energy is really strong. It's pulling on our systems, a kind of a global energy. There's a shift that's happening. It's been happening for a while and it continues to kind of evolve and shift and pull. It's the energy is moving now. I've talked about it in the last couple months, probably about six months or so, talking about how the energy is kind of squishing in and then shooting up. What I'm feeling now is there's this energy pulling out. It's almost like it's pulling like osmosis, trying to draw stuff out of me and out of other people. And I'm finding that it's a, a different pull. So now I'm getting accustomed to that. So your sensitivity right now may be heightened by what's going on energetically on a global scale. Okay, so keep that in mind as we go through this. When I talk about highly sensitive people and varying degrees of highly sensitivity, and remember that you can have that varying degree day to day, moment to moment, environment to environment. And at the same time, there's going to be certain things that you're going to want to put in place to take care of yourself through it. So one thing, the very first thing that I do as a highly sensitive person, because I'm an empath, because as a healer, I pick up on other people's emotions, I pick up on their physical pain, I can often get messages in my body, feeling their pain and discomfort as if it was my own. So sometimes if I have hip pain, 
uh, it's because someone else around me has hip pain. Now I don't get those messages where it's coming constantly like thorns bombarding me now because I've learned how to mind my own business when I'm in public. So that message or that information doesn't just come flying in all the time constantly for me. It's more when I'm tuning in and when I'm actively kind of checking in with somebody with their energy, then I can actually really feel it invited in and I can invite it to leave. At the same time I'm bringing that energy in, I'm letting my energy and the energy of the information dance, but I'm not getting intermingled. I used to get it intermingled. It used to be like a bit of a rat's nest. And then I used to always try and extend my own energy as well, which is a waste because people can't use your energy. It's like your fingerprint. It's, it's unique to you. So there's different ways of approaching and playing with energy. And one way that I'm going to invite you to approach it, especially when you're feeling sensitive, is to imagine the energies dancing with your energy, but remaining separate. We need to teach it from a standpoint of duality, from separation, in order to shift the mind into living oneness. So when I talk about kind of that dual duality thinking, it's purposeful to unwind the mind. It's purposeful to be able to take those weak points away from the ego so that you can actually really stand solid and embrace your sensitivity as the gift that it is. Because there's times where it actually felt very much like a curse for me. And I know there's times that it feels like a curse for a lot of people. So the first key is awareness. Are you a highly sensitive person? How does that show up for you? When do you feel more stimulated than other times? What environments or what types of people or what type of situations are harder for you to be in or around? And what situations and what type of people are easier for you to be around? So creating awareness as to what works for you and what doesn't work for you, at the same time being open to that changing and shifting and evolving because there may be a time where a certain environment works for you and then eventually it doesn't. So you need to, we need to be adaptable as well. So creating awareness, being adaptable, acceptance is essential. If you don't accept that you're a highly sensitive person or that you have heightened sensitivities, if you can't accept that, then you will experience more resistance. It will actually increase even more, it'll be even harder. So acceptance is essential. I remember at one point I was working with a healer and I just, at that time I was having a lot of health issues. I was having a lot of uh, mental challenges. My, I was unwinding some really intense beliefs in my mind and I really just wanted a different body. I didn't want my sensitive body anymore. I didn't want the the, the the body that was sensitive to food and sensitive to emotions and sensitive to environments and sensitive to cold and temperature. I didn't want that body anymore. So I said to her, I'm like, can I, can I trade it in? Can I just get a, an upgraded model? Can I get a different model? But the truth is I chose this body in my spiritual experience before I came here. I chose a body that was hypersensitive. I chose a body that would be hypersensitive to food and to experiences, to energy, all of it, because it actually is my greatest gift. When I was resisting my body, when I was resisting being sensitive and hypersensitive, that increased my suffering. It increased my suffering because of my thoughts, but it increased my suffering because it actually created more resistance. It actually created more sensitivity because I was resisting the sensitivity. And my tolerance became so low that my experience of the noise became extremely high. So acceptance is essential. And even if you can't fully accept, like genuinely accept, at least attempt to be in a place of acceptance. I'm hypersensitive and it's okay. I don't like being hypersensitive, but it's okay. It is what it is. 
I chose this body, even though I'm questioning why I chose this body in this moment, even though I don't understand why I chose this body. I'm hypersensitive and it's okay. I'm feeling sensitive to the noise right now and it's okay. The challenge is a lot of times when we feel hypersensitive or when we're picking up on other people's emotions or when we feel obligated to stay and help someone when we really just feel in our heart that we need to go home and rest or get away from that environment or get away from that noise. The first thing that happens is the ego feeds guilt. The ego loves to use guilt to make us feel like we should stay, we should push through, we should just suck it up, do it anyways, we should self-sacrifice, pick one for the team, whatever it is that the ego is going to convince you of, it will use guilt to make you feel like you are not allowed to take care of yourself. And it'll even use judgment to convince you that there's something wrong with you. And there's not. Being sensitive and highly sensitive doesn't mean there's something wrong with you. It's actually a beautiful gift. When you know how to navigate it, when you know how to be in this world, especially with the ever-changing experience of the energy of what's going on right now and the outward expression of people's dense energy, it's much more challenging to be in the world right now. But what the world needs is more sensitive people who have waken up, who are awake and doing the work for themselves and for others. So there's a reason that hyper and highly sensitive people are becoming even more sensitive. And it's in that awareness and it's in that acceptance that we can say yes to play the role we're meant to play. And it doesn't mean that we're out in the world, pushing, 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 forcing ourselves to be in situations we're not meant to be. It's more about following the guidance, trusting your heart to lead you, letting the divine guide you and letting that force animate you, letting the divine carry you and sustain you and the beautiful thing is when we follow guidance when you let your heart lead when you let the divine guide you you are totally taken care of so if i was really tapping in and tuning into my guidance that one day where i went to that last store i would have gotten the nudge to go home and i wouldn't have had to suffer through the intensity of that crazy wheel on the shopping cart and everything else that was coming at me in all these different directions. The good news is because I got the message, I actually listened, finally listened and went home and I recovered a lot quicker than I would have before. So awareness, acceptance, and a willingness to follow your guidance. Make peace with the fact that you're sensitive and you'll have less experience of suffering. And it's helpful too if you let people around you know that you're sensitive or that you're feeling sensitive. So my husband the other day, he, I woke up and he's like, are you grumpy or are you like, <laughs> he's trying to suss it out? Like, how do I approach her today? And I was like, no, I'm just feeling really quiet and really sensitive. He's like, okay. Because he would ask me a question, I would just give one answer, one word answer or like just was really quiet. So he, he understands, he knows, he doesn't get it because he's not highly sensitive, but he understands that when I'm in that space, when I'm feeling that way, then he just needs to give me permission to be that way. And that's exactly what I need is people around me that will accept and be okay with however I'm feeling in that moment and respect that I need that quiet. And the good news is my house is actually really quiet and my kids are quiet. And for the most part, my dogs are quiet, not always, but, but they're learning. So we create these environments to support us. That's essential, that's really important. 
The one thing I learned over the years, and this is my, one of the tools as an empath, an empath is a healer that actually can feel and pick up on other people's emotions and physical experiences in their body as if it were their own. So I'd feel it in my body. And the one question someone asked me once that really changed everything for me in that experience for me is when I feel pain, discomfort, noise, when I'm feeling very sensitive, when I'm feeling anxious, when I'm feeling guilty, when I'm feeling whatever I'm feeling, I stop and ask, is this mine or someone else's? When you're hypersensitive or highly sensitive and there's someone else around you that's feeling anxious, quite often you can pick up on their anxiety and without even realizing it, you'll feel anxious. And your own anxiety kind of is fed with that. So when you ask, is this mine or someone else's, your intention is if it's someone else's, you're inviting it to leave your body, your field, your experience. And if it's yours, it'll stay, and then you're actually willing to look at it and process it the way you need to. So when I ask, when I have pain and I ask, is this mine or someone else's? If it's someone else's, I usually get an indication of who that is, and then it leaves immediately. You don't have to know if it's someone else's and whose it is. Just know that if it's not yours, ask it to leave. Really important. So put, write that question down. Is this mine or someone else's? That is a lifesaver for a lot of people that are hypersensitive. If you're in a space and you're just feeling something that doesn't make sense for your situation, ask yourself that question and then invite whatever's not yours to leave. And it will leave your field. It will leave your emotional body. It will leave your experience. And if there's something you're meant to do with it, it'll be brought to your awareness. Otherwise, let it go. So for me, because I've learned how to mind my own business, I learned how to prevent the constant bombarding of people's energies and emotions and pain. Now, if something comes in and I'm like, wait a minute, this doesn't feel like mine, I can usually get an indication of whose it is and it leaves, but I also get an, an inkling or a guidance around whether I'm meant to reach out to that person. So sometimes I get a message in my body to get my attention because I'm actually meant to work with somebody or I'm meant to deliver a message for them. So I'm open to that as well. And you can be too, if that's something that you feel is happening for you. The other piece then becomes whatever's yours, whatever's left over, drop into the feeling, be willing to feel it. A lot of times, especially anxiety or anything negative, we want to avoid the feeling. I had someone recently, one of my clients, reach out to me and say, you know, I'm feeling very angry, almost explosive anger. And that's actually quite common right now because a lot of the dense leftover energy is rising up to the surface and clearing. And now this energy is no longer squishing and letting it rise. It's actually pulling it, like drawing it out of us. So it's a different movement of energy. And we have a different experience of how it's leaving the body. So it can feel different when we're processing anger. It can feel different when we're processing anxiety or any kind of other energy or any other emotion. When you are feeling the feelings, I, the human nature of it is to avoid it, distract yourself, and try and numb it out or look the other way. I encourage you to drop right into it. Sink right into the feeling. Sit down beside it. Become friends with it. Hang out with it. Don't camp out there, but sit down beside it and witness it. Witness it fully. Feel it fully. Let yourself have the expression. Let that energy, emotions are energy in motion. Let that energy have its expression so that you can actually release it and clear it. When you resist your feelings, that's when you hold on to your feelings. And when you hold on to them as a highly sensitive person, it becomes intense very quickly and it accumulates and becomes very dense very quickly. So feeling your feelings is actually the freedom from the feeling or the emotion is actually in feeling it. Then there's forgiveness, forgiving over 
the experience of guilt, forgiving over your thoughts, your beliefs that aren't serving you. Forgiveness is a beautiful tool to offer over something to spirit, to the divine and say, okay, please hold this for me and guide me in how to heal it. Show me the way. I'm willing to heal this. Guide me, lead me, direct me. Forgiveness is essentially offering your personal will or your ego's will to the divine and saying, I choose my soul's will in this moment. I choose to heal this. I choose to let this go. I choose to process this, forgive this. Please show me the way. So it's a, a process of deep surrender and forgiveness. I'm going to take a short break, but I want you to reflect on how you feel sensitive, how it shows up for you. Is there times where it's harder, more challenging? Is it times where it's easier and flowing and, and you know, feels like you're not that sensitive? It depends on your environment. And then also I want you to take a look at what are some of the tools that you use right now that you don't even realize that might actually work in those moments where you feel sensitive. So we're gonna take a short break and we'll be right back. This is a clarion call for all healers, intuitives, empaths, light leaders, visionaries, and conscious souls. We are here to usher in deep healing and profound awakenings, to shift our collective consciousness from head to heart to ignite hearts and unite in love for each other and our planet, to illuminate our path and the path for others. Our heart-led living community is a place to come home and to shine bright as beacons of love from this house of light. Join our Heart Yes movement and experience a sacred healing community of support as you discover how to embody your true heart yes, to hear and trust your intuition as you answer the deepest call of your heart. Take Sue's hand and open your heart to receive the support you need to heal self, be the change, and play your part in the healing of the whole of humanity. Join us at heartledliving.com forward slash become a member. Again, join us at heartledliving.com forward slash become a member. Welcome back. You're listening to Life by Divine, and I am your host, Sue Dumay. Today I've been talking about how to navigate being a highly sensitive person in a noisy world. So some tips and tools and different perspectives that I have used over the years that I teach other people in through the Intuition Academy and through our membership that I've shared in my books. There's tons and tons and tons of tools. And the key is to find the tools that work for you at the time and recognizing that those tools can evolve and shift. And sometimes those tools need to be let go. And that's why in Heart of Living, I teach to be open to anything and attached to nothing. So if we start using a tool and we get very attached to it, that attachment is of fear and that attachment comes from ego. So we need to be open to tools coming and going. We need to be open to tools evolving and shifting. And we need to be open to new downloads and new ideas coming in all the time. And because the the world is constantly evolving. Humanity is evolving. I talked last week about spiritual redirections and course corrections. There's a lot of course correcting happening right now based on all the choices that we as humans have made in the last three to five years. There's some significant choices uh, that we've kind of created as a whole that require a lot of course correction. So that's happening and that impacts us on so many levels we can't even I can't even begin to explain it so we are becoming more sensitive we're becoming people with lower tolerance and many people are actually becoming hypersensitive so how do you navigate the world when you're feeling that way what are some of the tools what are some of the things you can do and that's what we've been talking about today so the next step, we talked about feeling the emotions, forgiveness. I talked about deep surrender. And I want to talk about self-care and soul care, especially when you're highly sensitive. When you feel highly sensitive 
especially on those days where it's heightened even more, your soul care and your self care has to be non negotiable. When you look at there's certain things that you know really support you, nurture you, nourish you, those are the things that you want to hold steady with. Those are the practices that want, you want to become or create as non negotiable. So I've, I did a whole radio show on non-negotiable self-care practices. So you can go back and search for that one in the podcast replays. But for today, what I really want you to hear is that there's certain things that you already do or that you know you're meant to do that really nurture and nourish you on a, on a physical level, but also emotionally, mentally, spiritually, and energetically. So some of those non-negotiables for me, are starting my morning with bone broth. That for me has been the biggest blessing, especially for my digestion, because <clears throat> I have a lot of issues with my digestive system. So that has kind of resolved a lot of stuff. When I start my day with broth, it changes everything. So it's like kind of starting off on the right foot. Also magnesium. Magnesium is one of those things, one of those supplements that my body needs. And because my, my nerves and my central nervous system really kind of turns on real quick and does these interesting little jolty jiggly things, I find that the magnesium really supports me on so many, in so many levels, so many ways. So that's something that I do as a human. I take the magnesium supplement. That's a non-negotiable for me. Every day I have that. And the, the degree or the dose I'm intuitive about. So one morning I may wake up and I feel to take, you know, 300 milligrams and another morning I may end up only taking two or I might take four. So I'm very in tune each time I take it and making sure that it's guided in the moment and the dose is guided for me as well. So that's one thing, the bone broth and then my yoga practice. Now I haven't done my yoga practice in the last couple of days and this morning it kept coming in but there was a few things I had to do before the radio show, so I have not done it yet today. And I can feel it in my body. I can feel some of my nerves kind of getting all little jarred up or jammed up, so to speak. Some of my muscles and fascia getting jammed up. So because I'm very aware of my body, because I'm very aware of the impact on my body with different things, it... I can feel when I'm not doing those things that I'm, I'm meant to be doing. So when I'm done this, I have my member call. And then right after that, I'm going to do some yoga. So for me, I just need to bring that back in. And it has to be every day. It's one of those things, but it doesn't have to be a lot. For me, 10 minutes of yoga each day is kind of that scrumptious feeling. I could do longer if I'm guided to do longer, but my non-negotiable is 10 minutes. So that's what I'm, what I'm committing to. So take a look at your life. What are some things that nurture and nourish you? What are some things that really feed your soul, really nurture your body and support you in being in this world? And a lot of times, highly sensitive people need quiet integration. Quiet integration is kind of away from the noise, you may have quiet music, meditative music. It may be silent. You may end up watching, you know, a really feel-good program or something. Maybe reading a book. But quiet integration is essential in a noisy world for highly sensitive people. And for me, that's a great, you know, a hot bath with Epsom salts is a great way to do that. You can put some candles if you need to. You can even play some quiet music. You can use... There's a lot of music that's actually created with the vibrational frequency of different elements that, that can actually support you as well. So there's tons of different resources right now that you can use. There was a period of time I was working with the nine Silvigio frequencies and I basically like would listen to this one track every day. I think I did it every day for like a month. And then it dropped away. And then there's this other tool, tool that came in, another meditation track, just music. That's, again, had a, a specific frequency, 432 hertz. I listened to that for a period of time. And then there was another shift. So 
again, being adaptable, being open to the guidance shifting and changing as well. When we are highly sensitive, we can be highly sensitive to other people's negative emotions, but we can also be highly sensitive to positive emotions. We can be overwhelmed with joy. We can be overwhelmed with love. We can be overwhelmed with gratitude and warmth and connection. So I want you to recognize that it's not just the negative things in life that we can feel overwhelmed by. Sometimes when there's so much love or so much joy, that in itself can be overwhelming to a highly sensitive person. So I just want you to understand that so that you don't judge yourself. Because the ego loves to judge, make us wrong, make us feel guilty, make us feel bad. That's just the nature of the ego. So when you understand that it's okay, it's okay to feel these way, this way, it's okay to be overwhelmed by love, it's okay to be overwhelmed by any positive emotions, when we can accept, goes back to acceptance, then you can sink in and allow the experience of that emotion to move through you in the way it's meant to. And at the same time, we can actually recognize that sometimes, depending on our internal set point for love, we may need to draw back a little bit and create that integration, create that quiet integration for ourselves. The one thing I tell you too that I find really important, and I mostly do this at night before bed, I will do it after a yoga practice as well, and you'll be familiar if you've done yoga, there's a practice of savasana, savasana. And most people at that last point of the class where you're lying flat on your back, arms to the side, legs straight on the ground, most people are tempted to just get up and go because it feels like you're doing nothing. But in that moment, there is so much happening. You are doing everything all at once. And what's happening is your whole central nervous system is integrating your practice, your nerves, your back, your spine, your muscles, your bones, everything, your whole system is actually taking everything that happened in the last 24 hours and integrating it. There's times where I lie my back before bed and I feel like little jittery, jerky kind of movements. Sometimes my muscles will twitch. Sometimes I actually go into like some body shakes because I have different experiences that my body is processing and the energy is moving out of my body. So when you lie on your back flat, you can put a bolster under your knees if you need support for your low back. But when you lie on your back, and give your spine and central nervous system the opportunity to integrate, especially if you actually set an intention for integration. You'll support your body physically, emotionally, energetically, mentally, and spiritually. You'll support your body for integrating the last 24 hours of life's experiences. As humans, we go from one life experience to the other, one trigger to the next, one hypersensitive experience to the other, one noisy environment to the next, one task to the next. We don't have a lot of time in between to integrate. Even if we actually have like this explosive energy of anger, we don't actually diffuse it. We don't learn to diffuse it. When you look at two cats, if you've ever seen two cats fight, they, they get their backs all up and they're coming together and they're, you know, challenging each other. They're trying to make each other look bigger than the other and they, and they fight and they scrap and they go crazy. And then they walk away. They both walk away and they shake it off. They literally shake it off. They literally shake their body and they're releasing that experience. They're releasing the buildup of energy that cr was created from that experience and letting it go. Some animals, after they recover from a fight or being chased, will actually go and sit down and shake. And just like, just the gentle shake, and that's their way of integrating the experience and letting it go. As humans, we hold on to things. 
And if you're hypersensitive or highly sensitive, then holding on to anything that's happened throughout the day will only magnify your sensitivity. And going forward each day, it will become more and more magnified. So something as simple as lying flat on your back and giving your spine and central nervous system an opportunity to integrate what has happened and shift and move the energy of what has happened in the last 24 hours is such a gift because then you don't go into the next day with any leftovers. Now, different modalities that help move this energy, acupuncture is great, uh, cranial sacral work is great to kind of help the, the system kind of process some of these traumas or process some of these experiences. There is different modalities that you may be drawn to go and experience, different healing modalities that can also help you process. And I know when I do one-on-one -on -one work, a lot of times I'm helping people process trauma and experiences, and it could be like a small trauma or a big trauma, old wounds that happened in childhood or even past life work. So sometimes when we carry forth this, these leftovers, they actually be make us feel even more sensitive to things that are happening and even more triggered to life as it's occurring in the present moment. So we need to heal our past. We need to release and let go of those past experiences so that we can be a clear channel here and now and keep our intuitive channel open. When we're hypersensitive or highly sensitive, the tendency is to want to close things off or shut down. And shutting down actually is sometimes a good thing. You kind of have to go and shut yourself out from the world and close things and just take a break. I'm not saying not do that. That's important. But when you're out in the world and you've closed your heart because you're just overwhelmed with everything that's going on, it actually ends up blocking the hurt in or it ends up blocking the energy in. So ideally, an open heart allows us to let the experiences and let the energy of the experience flow through us and out. When we have a closed heart, that energy comes in and gets held. We believe that a closed heart actually protects us, but it actually holds the hurt. It holds the density. It holds the trauma or the experience in, which leads to magnified sensitivity as well. So I know I'm giving you a lot of information today. For those of you that are familiar with this, this is just some review and some new ideas, some different things. Pick what, pick what resonates. For those of you that it's a new concept and you don't quite understand it, just take what you need today and start to reflect and create some awareness around how it impacts your life or how it doesn't impact your life and see what you need in the way of your self-care and soul care when it comes to being sensitive in this noisy world. One other tool that I really love to use and, and even when I was actually at that grocery store and I, I, I literally wanted to put my energetic earmuffs on, I did this at one point. And this is, now you can't see me, those of you that are, aren't watching the video on YouTube, but I have my hands over my ears like I have putting earmuffs on. There was a period of time where I recognized that I can actually sometimes turn down the volume. So there is like a little volume knob that I visualize and I can turn down the volume or I can put these earmuffs on that block out the noise. So kind of noise canceling earmuffs. Those often work but not when I'm feeling overstimulated or really hypersensitive. Like at the grocery store, the, I even plugged my ears, like physically plugged my ears, and it still felt like the noise was inside my brain, like scraping and rubbing and making it feel just unbearable. So there's going to be times where some of the tools are going to really work easily, and then the other times it's going to be a little bit more challenging. So for this one, with the earmuffs, you can actually put Imagine yourself putting noise canceling earmuffs on. You can also imagine yourself putting earplugs in, or you could imagine yourself turning down the volume. And if you ask the divine, please turn down the volume, often that volume will come down and it'll be more manageable. So that's something else to consider as you're out in the world and having these experiences. 
the more you can keep your intuitive channel open, the more you can remove the blocks to your guidance, the more sensitive you're going to become. That's good news. And at the same time as you're becoming more sensitive, what you need for self-care and soul care is going to change and evolve, shift as well. So be open to that. Being sensitive in this world is not a curse. It's not a bad thing. It's not wrong. It's actually good news. The world needs more of us to be sensitive. It needs more people to stop numbing themselves out and dimming their light and trying to distract and keep themselves from feeling what they need to feel in order to heal. We need more people that are willing to go into their own density, to go into their own wounds and trauma and move through them so they can free themselves from it. Because as we heal individually, we're contributing to the healing of the whole. And that's what the world needs right now. More of us who are willing to heal as deeply as possible. Now, how we heal or who we go to heal is all programmed within our heart. If we live life by divine and we allow the divine to lead us and guide us, you'll be guided to the healers you're meant to see, the practitioners you're meant to see, the books you're meant to read, the songs you're meant to listen to, the meditations you're meant to use. Everything will be given. Every detail. Every detail will be given. You will get directions like you're following a recipe. You will get directions, take a bath, Epsom salt. And then after the bath, you'll get directions, dry off, lie down do some yoga. It, it'll literally, everything will be given. If you're listening with your inner ear, if you're listening with your heart, if you're tuning in, allowing the divine to guide you and lead you, all the directions will be given. Moment to moment. The key is we're so used to trying to figure out what we're going to do 10 steps ahead. <clears throat> you really just need to focus on the step that's in front of you. That's where the guidance comes in, in this very moment. And in every moment that follows, that's where the divine spirit can work with us. And it will come in like a whisper. It will come in as a vision. Different ways that we receive intuitive hits and intuitive messages comes in. How it comes in for you might be a little different than everybody else. But the more sensitive you become, the more tuned you become to your own intuition, the more you'll be able to take care of yourself in this noisy world. And even when the world is noisy, it won't feel as noisy because you'll be in this space of being animated by the divine, being guided and sustained by love. And that will allow you to be in this world differently than you have been in the past. I want to thank you so much for tuning in. I want to encourage you to Listen back to this episode, find some more tools, be open to the tools showing up in your life. If you need support, if you're looking for a mighty companion who can work with you, who can mentor you, who can guide you and direct you, who can listen and hear for your guidance when you're not quite hearing it yourself, to empower you to eventually tap in and hear it for yourself, then I'm more than, more than willing to work with you. We have some openings for the Heart Led Living membership right now. We also have the Intuition Academy. We're going to do a, a, probably another launch later in the year, so we can be open to that. But just know that there are lots of resources out there. There are lots of opportunities right now. There's more and more people waking up to support others in dealing with the world the way it is, helping you navigate this noisy world in a way that you can feel at peace, sustained, and held. And if that's me, I'd be happy to work with you. And of course, you can always tune into these episodes each week, download them and keep them on your favorite device, use them whenever you need to. And just know that I'm here to remind you of your divinity. I can meet you in your humanness and remind you of your divinity, to remind you of the truth of who you really are. 
And as we do that, we remove all the blocks to love. We remove all the blocks and everything that is influencing or impacting your intuitive channel. So opening up that space in your heart, opening up that space in your mind so it's open, receptive, and you can receive those downloads as well. I love you. I appreciate you. I honor you. I see you. Until next week, love and blessings. You've been listening to Life by Divine with your host, Sue DeMay. Shift your consciousness from head to heart and enliven your soul as you discover how to lead with your heart and live your own life by divine. Join Sue in the growing global heart-led living community at heartledliving.com. That is heartledliving.com.